See what happens when you leave a skid steer away for a little bit? Look at that. You little punk. You deserve to be locked in there. Crapping all over this thing. Come here, you little bugger. Come here. No, come here. Come here. Stinker. What are you thinking? You sit in your feces, buddy. Do you even care? You don't. Oh. Oh, I, I thought you cared. Okay. All right. Well, glad we settled this. All right. Time for our annual camp out on the farm trip with the crew. What do we got, guys? Food? What kind of food? Hobo dinners. Are you a hobo? Yes. Oh, well, then we're eating the right food. Where's your food? Sky. Oh, no. He's showing mine. Oh, but he's over there and you're here. How's that work? Do you throw it at him? Mom's... Does he catch it with his mouth? Here's our new home. Fresh off the internet. First time popping it up. Even got still some packaging material caught on it that we missed. But, lots of room. Back door entrance goes into this. Beautiful. Caragana. Paradise. And if you sneak through here, careful. Careful. Don't snag a shirt. Gonna be doing this half naked in the middle of the night. All right. You break into this meadow. Oh, shh. It's a coyote. Do you guys see that? Whoa. Wow. This here is where you do your business under the stars. See what I'm getting at here? Pop squat, stare at stars. All right, I better get to eat some food. I guess I picked the right time to go spraying, or I went spraying to pick the right time to rain. Either way, rain's welcome. I don't know how much it's gonna do, but you know what, we'll take it. I just probably might have to respray what I just did a little bit ago, so at least I got a weeded system, so I'll know what did come up or what did, and I can take care of it cheap. Right, let's get home. Wow, this is nice. I think a lot more came down up north, so we're getting some rain in the areas that really needed it. I'll know more shortly here, but the crop is definitely stunted and hurt, but it's still filling heads, they're still filling pods, so anything like this is definitely gonna help. This is my road to my house. Look at the kochia growing up and down the sides of the ditch. We don't really have a good pickup sprayer right now, and our four-wheeler spray is, sprayer isn't really set up to handle that kind of stuff. And I want to spray it, and we don't have a good mower for it. So uh, I was just thinking, I can use the weed it. Wing it out. I'll turn my sensors off on the outside booms, narrow it down so this way, just the width of the road will be spraying. Put it on spot spray, and it'll go. Won't spray the road, take care of the kosher. Should we try it? I think so. Let's wing it out. It's working. Oh yeah. Take it weeds. Nice clean driveway in a couple days. Ugh, can't stand those things. There's my width right there. Let's take a look at some uh, applied rate. Look at that. Where are the weeds at? Right on the edges. Isn't that cool? See, that's why we build big root. Take care of my driveway. Makes a lot of sense. This is extremely satisfying. One gallon an acre. Can't follow it. It's gonna take a while to run this tank out. All right, well, got a lot of acres to go. We'll see how far we get. While doing some spraying, got a call from uh, a buddy of mine who farms right in our area, and his dad said they found hail damage up north on some of our stuff, so I think dad already took off. I told him he's gonna go look, but I can't help it. I'm gonna grab the pickup and stop training for a minute. Let's go see what it looks like. See if uh, there's much damage. So we'll know here in a second. Let's take off. This time of the year, that's typically where your moisture comes from is thunderstorms. Um, and statistically, there's a pretty good chance you're, you're gonna see some hail in those. Uh, the difference this year compared to last year is we ponied up and took out a big hail insurance policy. So. 
some of these areas, if we got hailed, we would be better off collecting the hail insurance if it was 100% than harvesting the crop. Other areas of this farm have actually decent crop on it and I think we'd be better off harvesting it than collecting hail insurance. And you're not getting a 100% check unless it's 100% hailed out, if that makes sense. So we'll find out what, how bad it is, uh, but we can collect some on it. So yeah, you wanna collect everything you can and try to pay back those premiums on the hail insurance policy you took out. Um, the downside about all this is where it hailed, oh, I'm looking at this right here, I see some of that. That's not ours, but there's definitely some thin spots. Um, is it hailed in the area of far better crop, not the lousy crop that we would have been more okay with getting hailed. Just got a hold of dad, he's right over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick him up. Um, he's looking at some right now. I'm just looking at our peas just from the road and it looks like some of it's laying over. Now that could just be heavy rain too, uh, but we'll know more when we get into it. Just walked out into this real quick. It definitely stripped the peas off a lot of this. You can see it all on the ground down there, all these pods. I don't know how much, 40% maybe here. Not 100% by any means, but definitely some hail here. So we'll chalk this area up as hailed grounds so that way they can get the adjuster out start looking at this well thankfully it turned out to be just a couple acres like three fields so it's not really gonna amount to a whole lot we'll still have it adjusted we'll collect a little bit on it but it wasn't much of the farm our good land didn't get hail so that's good but we did get some good water out of some of that so yeah sounds good i dropped dad off the side by side and run it back but anyways yeah we're uh we're doing okay our neighbor did get hit a little harder than we did his crop was pretty pretty sad in that spot but right next to our really sad ground, but still, it did get him a little harder than us. Hey, just don't know where it's gonna land. But with every hailstorm, always comes a little bit of water. Probably about four tenths out of that thing, maybe a half inch in some areas. Not a real wide path, but that's good. We'll love it. Well, it's out there, we'll continue to grow and we'll have a little bit more of a harvest. One thing I haven't showed a lot is the console. So see these old tire tracks right here where there's weeds growing? Right up here, this is the console. These are all the sensors. See the spikes right there? That's showing those sensors are detecting chlorophyll and they're activating the solenoids on those spots. So you can actually see the tire tracks on this graph here. So this gives me instant data on what is going on out there. Pretty cool. Look at those spikes, isn't that neat? Now the more that I'm able to run this system, I'm getting a better feel of it. I just tell you what, that right there, or this right here, applied rate of one gallon an acre, two, zero. I've had the same tank I filled up hours ago and I've still got 700 gallons in it. And it's awesome. I just keep spraying. I just, I don't have to worry about driving home, filling up again. I just keep spraying. I'm getting more acres done an hour now than if I had rode back every hour and a half. Now, this is clean fields. Like this, there's still some big kosher plants here and here and here and here, and I'm getting them. But now that I've gotten out of the bad stuff, gotten into this, it's really starting to shine. This is the kind of stuff that makes me glad we bought the system. Really nice. It just keeps getting better and better. Check it out. E stands for efficiency, 99%. So I'm using 99% less product than I would if I were spraying 10 to 12 gallons an acre on this. That's pretty amazing. There we go. Done and done. Finished chem follow operation number three for the year. Just finished washing Big Brood down. Check this out. That's the fuel level right there. Right about that. Didn't put any fuel in it the whole time. 20, 2,800 acres. So I sprayed 2,800 acres on probably 180 gallons, 200 gallons. That's 15 acres a gallon. That's pretty good, 15 acres a gallon. I, that's tough to beat that kind of fuel burn for what I got done. All right, well, so far success. Now to move on to other things until we come back to this. But it's good to have that behind me because harvest is coming around the corner. Those peas, as you can see, are turning. And we're going to be getting combines out here for a couple days and getting ready. So the next chem follow operation probably will be towards the end of harvest or right after. So we'll see how it goes, depending on how it rains. We got one combine going. It's out in the field. Uh, he just went out and started to cut some peas. I'll run out there and see how things are going. But uh, so far, he says it's good. This combine, 
we need a clean grain elevator chain replaced. It is very wore out. But the sprocket on top needs to be replaced as well. Now, the sprocket was supposed to be here, and then somehow somebody grabbed it, and they don't know where it's at. It's in transport, and hopefully it'll be here today. So I can't really work on that until I get that sprocket to change that clean grain elevator. Now, what needs to be done? You see that piece, pizza cutter? <laughs> yeah. These are starting to show cracks. And uh, I don't like the idea of this thing driving down the road and a tire blowing out. It's kind of a death trap. And this tire here is getting a little low. I'm going to attempt on putting these things on. I've actually never done a tire this size with a small sidewall. I hear they're not fun, but we'll find out. Okay, you guys can watch me struggle. That wasn't too bad. It's a little hot outside, a little sweaty in here. But uh, got the old one off and I'm just putting air in this one, taking a little bit to try to get it to seat. As you can tell, there's a little bit of a gap there. It's slowly going. They got little tiny uh, grooves on the rim all the way around so the tire doesn't slip and it's leaking through each one of those little kind of grooves. Eventually the rubber will kind of seal itself around it. It's fine. It just takes a little bit to kind of get it to slide over. But uh, I'll just let it fill for a while. I'll just kind of babysit it and make sure I don't overfill it in case it does seat. And it looks like it's slowly seating. But, uh, but yeah, not too shabby. And then I got the other one to do. Guess what? I got some visitors. My first time running the combine. So uh, why not make it with some uh, visitors? Do you guys know each other? Yes. Do you know me? Yes. Who am I? Uh, just I'm kill mom. A moth. No, you're you gonna not. kill a moth? Oh, did you get it? Uh, no. You didn't get it. Did you get it? Did we get it? Did you just steal her seat? <laughs> the grass, grass, grassy hoppers. There's a few in there, huh? Yes, we're driving the 9370. This is the first load of bees head to the bins. And uh, let's go use that Westfield auger into the nice West Steel bin. And uh, yeah, it's a little hot out today, guys. I'm gonna be honest, 97 degrees. Um, yeah, it's a little warm. But the combine's out there cutting and uh, let's make some room for him to put some more bees in this truck. And yeah. You're probably wondering why are we not using two combines? Waiting for parts on the other one. Apparently the dealership lost one of the pieces that we needed and so can't use it. So we're just running one combine. Which gives me time to do other things like change tires on Apache and whatnot and stuff. I really love this truck. Okay, we're back in the saddle again with Kobe. All right, um, day three. It's been broke up uh, uh, since we first started cutting uh, the the other combine. We're waiting on a sprocket. I think I probably said that in a, the past 
uh, segment, but uh, maybe it'll come in tomorrow. So we've been running one. It's been, it went over the weekend. I had a class reunion. For those who uh, know what a class reunion is, is uh, this they change as they go from the earliest years to when you get a lot older. Uh, the earliest years you're trying to impress, you know, your best side forward, you know, you know what are you doing? Mine was the 50th. So that was my class reunion, the 50th in Shelby. And uh, we were just going, <laughs> you're still alive? Oh, wow. Changes. So anyway, uh, so we've been broke up. So we really haven't had, uh, you know, like a few hours a day. And uh, some of the peas aren't ready yet, so that's fine. But we're, uh, we're chewing on it. We've got uh, probably, this will make over 200 some acres cut. Uh, it's just sporadic, but uh, hopefully this next week we'll really get started into uh, both machines and then we've got to hammer out. Uh, the weather's holding. Uh, it's 96, 97 today. Um, take 30 degrees off and that's what we're experiencing right now. As you can see right now, you can look um, over here. It's uh, really short, thin. Then you get over here and it slope, slopes down toward the road and the water pooled when the snow melted. And so that's why it's a little better. The yield, when you go through those areas, kick right up there into the 20s to touching 30. But then when you get past, like as I'm gonna get past, I'm climbing up a slight grade. So that's not, that's the last of where the snow bank and the water pool now we're getting into where it's just dry and then I'll show you what the yields do okay we're getting closer to roughly what uh, the just yield monitors adjusting it's climbing down so it's uh we're doing around eight seven five four yeah some of these areas that over the slight hilltop Never caught much snow. There's really not ground moisture. The peas aren't doing as well. So that's what we're facing. It's pretty much on the ground. Uh, the reel down trying to pick it up and, and uh, push it into the draper belts to carry it to the middle. Uh, so, but it's, it's doing a good job, as you can see out there. It's doing a good job of catching all those pods. Now right here is where there was hail right up ahead that went through, just barely caught this corner of this field. And then of course, heavy rain. And as you can see, it's somewhat laid down and it was really laying down up there. So I had to cut that whole corner at uh, uh, sideways so that because if you go against where it's laying down, it's really hard to pick it up. So I went sideways and was able to lift it and uh, pick it up. So I had to cut a, a number of acres back and forth to try to clean up that uh, th that end. I, as you can see right here, it's laying down. Well, uh, there is some kochia in places. Now here's a low spot. I'm cutting down to a low spot. Now let's take a look. I'm slowing down because there's a little bit to chew through. Look how much material is coming in. The peas are a lot better. And then I'll show you, it was nine up on that hillside and it's going to keep climbing. Will we hit 30? Yes, we hit 30. All right. That's what it should have been on a normal year. We would have had normal rainfall. I think we have been looking at uh, between the low 20s to uh, hitting 30. So anyway, like I said, I'm back in the saddle again. It really feels good to be back in here. It was fun visiting with all the people that I had former classmates. They, uh, it's amazing how some people look the same and then some people change quite a bit. But once you say, you know, you're trying to remember the names, and uh, then when you name, and then you start looking. Oh, there's that characteristic of them. Yeah, I remember. You know the you know the physical appearance uh, uh, this way and that way. So 
Um, it's, it's, it's kind of fun that way just to see how we're undeveloping. I don't know, I think we were developed probably in our late teens to early t in the 20 year olds. Uh, that's when we're developed. Then I think it starts going downhill. And some of them is really a, a slope. But um, it was glad just to see the people we got to see. It was good to touch base. But anyway, I'm waiting for Kobe's reunion. Kobe, you want to go to your reunion? Huh? Do you care? I won't hound him about it. Right? Yeah. I think he's... They don't do 10-year reunions. I think they do 9K9. What's the matter? Did you see a little rabbit? Did you? He saw a little bunny. And uh, I'm not going to let him out because it was a small bunny. Uh, he caught it. I didn't see it until it just kind of moved off into the Devaro pit or the edge of the road. But he saw it. What do you think of that? Are you interested? Huh? Yes. Yeah, he's interested. But I don't let him chase the little ones. The big ones he can go after because they play with him, but not those small bunnies. I like to see them. So, all right. Maybe next time he'll grow up to be a bigger, uh, a bigger bunny. Then it'd be a lot more hair-raising adventure. Sorry.